what else? Um, talked about last last year. Learning net is uh, some CWB learning himself there, uh, Steve. We're talking about uh, different coke methods and CW ups and different methods for for learning CW. Um, severe weather spotting uh, and four NYX had asked about um, what they what people monitor, what frequencies do people monitor uh, for severe weather spotting. Um, Suggestion here from uh, GPA was on 14664 and 14667. I forget which uh, group that was, but uh, he recommended that. I think we saw that the Arapaho Aries had stood up a net for the severe weather. Um, can't remember where I saw that. Um, may have been on the aerial section group here. Um, what else? There was, uh, Jonathan uh, SUM was asking about the uh, differences of, of using, um, a 9 to 1 UNUN versus a, a dipole and a tuner for a 40 meter antenna. I think, uh, someone give, gave him some follow up on that. I couldn't remember exactly what that was on there. Um, Let's see. I showcased a spreadsheet that I'm working on that has some automation built into it for check-in process. So um, as a net controller, we can come in here and put in someone's call sign. Um, I have to leave it up for a minute to begin with, but then it'll auto-fill their information. Um, so, so say, say Dorian, if you, if you uh, look, look at that link I just posted, posted on RMRL, the RMRL of the 6, 6, 6, 9, 9, 4, 4 is traditionally been uh, where the weather is established in the Dredger area. area. You scroll, you scroll down, down to okay. Yeah, no, we had it. All was a specific weather net. Yeah, 146694. Call it our weather net. Yep, that's why he maybe mentioned that. Okay, yep. And I think last month we briefly talked about the the usage of APRS dot phi for weather gathering and spotting um, uses of uh, of using the weather stations around us to to do some some more information as well. So okay, very cool stuff. One four five one four six nine four. What else here? Make sure no one's waiting in this waiting room here. And today it is hot. It is hot out today. I can tell you that much. So a lot of office hits for. But we live in an arid desert. Desert. So that's what can we expect. I think I'm still, still falling out of cold. cold. Feels, feels good. good. You enjoying the, the warmer weather? Yes. yes. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying the warmer, warmer weather, weather too. too. That's funny. That's good. Yeah, yeah. My granddad got a base. base and probably last day of snowboarding. Oh. Yes, 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 I think. I think. Wasn't, wasn't too, too good. good. I think she's just done here. Yeah, I'm sure the uh, the heat is uh, weighing down on the the snowpack for sure. Yeah. yeah, and the whole debate of the uh, Colorado River and water source and states states fighting over that. That's always an interesting debacle as well. And where does it come from? Our mountaintops. So. Very cool stuff. What else? There's an interesting article in the paper this week about, about the proliferation of floating, floating solar, solar rays for power, power generation. generation. And hmm. how it helps with, with uh, limiting, limiting evaporation, evaporation from large, large bodies, bodies of water. water. Oh, okay. It helps so to prevent it. Kind of a win-win. Kind of kind of yeah. 
Oh, that's interesting. I guess that would make sense. I mean, it's blocking out the sunlight. Hmm, interesting. Plus, plus it provides cooling, cooling from the, the yeah. panels, so they, they, they produce, produce more power. power. Hmm. Interesting. I know there's a whole oh, topic of... Oh, hey, Jim, go right ahead. Sorry. Well, that's, well, that's all right. right. Well, first check my, my mic one more time. So. <laughs> gotcha. We got you now. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there's just a few of us here. It's uh, 6.23. We have another 40 minutes or so. If anybody has anything, let, let me know. Helping more people join here. And... And hopefully have a, a good audience, at least for our, our, the meeting as well. Um, I know Desiree asked about, did you follow up with her by chance, Jeff? Yeah, I yeah, got her link. link. So she, 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 okay. She so. Cool. Okay. couple of articles here over on hackaday.com um, one titled the uh, peak, peak of vacuum to radio design written by uh, Brian Cockfield on May 12th um, goes on to say uh, one of the more popular trends in the ham radio community right now is operating away from the shack parks on the air is an excellent way to take a mobile radio off grid and operate in the beauty of the of nature uh, but for those who want to take their rig to more extreme locations, there's another operating award program called Summits on the Air that requires the radio operators to set up a station on a mountaintop instead. Uh, this often requires lightweight, low-power radios to keep weight down for the hike. And uh, Dan, a.k.a. AI6XG, uh, explains, uh, has created a radio from scratch just to do that. So nothing uh, you guys haven't heard about, So, but uh, um, looks like a, a vacuum tube-based um, portable radio, which is an interesting thing. Um, vacuum tube CW. Um, he's uh, interested in summiting various mountains. Uh, this build incorporates all this interest. Uh, most vacuum tubes take a lot of energy to operate, but he dug up a circuit from 1967 that uses a single tube, which can operate from a 12 volt battery instead of needing mains power, thanks to some help from a more modern switch mode power supply. Uh, SMPS. Uh, it took a bit of research, though, in order to find one that wouldn't interfere with the radio's operation. That plus a few other modern tweaks, like a QCX interface. Um, uh, interface from a, a QRP Labs um, for, for operating purposes. It looks like a toggle between the receive and transmit uh, easy allows this radio to be quite versatile when operating while maintaining its portability and durability. Um, He's put all the schematics on the on his GitHub page. The only limitation is to keep in mind with a build like this is it tends to only work on a very narrow range of frequencies without adding further complexity to design. Uh, in, in this case, uh, within the CW portion of the 40 meter band, uh, but not as bad as most radios with these uh, design principles. So um, check out his um, web page here, AI6XG, and pretty good uh, lengthy uh, description and, and build about... Uh, to base QRP, something you don't hear or see very much. So we did a uh, summits on the air. W6 slash NC402 is activated. Let's do a little spying and see where that is. Um, Northern coastal ranges. Um, what was it? 02. Unnamed peak. Um, after Berryessa Peak. Uh, I should know exactly. Or no. Um, yeah, another summits on the air contact. Really beautiful. Make sure nobody's waiting in the waiting room here.
Another article here on Hackaday.com, exploring the early days of QRP radio, uh, written by uh, Brian Cockfield. As uh, him again here, May 10th. Um, this is talking about the work. Um, let's see, probably by a, a YouTube person who uh, put some together some information here. Um, it's oh, microwave is their uh, microwave one is their YouTube channel. I'm sure they probably have a uh, call sign, but. Uh, Let's see, the uh, article goes to say uh, Morse code might seem obsolete, but for situations with extremely limited bandwidth, it's often still the best communications option available. As we were kind of just talking about, some it's on the air, parks on the air, things we all know about. Um, code requires a fair amount of training to use effectively, though, and even proficient radio operators tend to send only around 20 words per minute. As a result of the reduced throughput, a type of language evolved around Morse code, which, like any language, has evolved around, changed, and changed over time. QRP initially meant something akin to, you are overloading my receiver, please reduce transmitter power. But now means operating radios at extremely low power, as we know, 5 watts and below. Um, there's been some debate in the amateur radio community over the years of what power level constitutes a QRP operation, uh, but it's almost certainly somewhere below 100 watts. And while radios in the video, uh, this video have varying power levels, they tend to be far below the upper threshold, with some operating on 1 watt or less. Uh, there are a few commercial offerings um, demonstrated here, produced from the 70s to the mid-80s, but a few are made from kits as well. Uh, easily and repairable, uh, accessible and repairable uh, Heath kit we were talking about earlier, a uh, more recognizable option. Um, to operate uh, CW um, requires only a single transistor, which is why uh, kits were so popular. But there are a few other examples in this video um, which show, um, let me see. which have a few more transistors than that. Um, let's see, QOP radios in general are attractive because they tend to be smaller, simpler, and more affordable. Making uh, QOP contacts over greater distances also increases one's ham radio street cred, especially when using uh, Morris. Uh, so although this benefit is uh, more intangible, uh, there's a large trend going on in the community right now. Uh, they, uh, they speculate the surrounding operating from parks and mountain peaks. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so QRP is the only way to get uh, that done, especially when operating on uh, battery power. So more QRP radios often support digital and voice modes as well and can have surprisingly high prices. But take some taking, taking some cues from this video about radios built in decades past could get you on the radio for a minimum or parts and cost uh, provided you can put in the time. So pretty cool stuff here. So the uh, community at large, or the electronics community is finally starting to, to come around and, and get more involved within the ham radio and, and, and uh, uh, playing a lot uh, uh, um, playing around a lot more with radios and, and things like that so it's cool to hear let's see What else? If you all have anything, please don't hesitate to, to jump in. Um, as you know, these are kind of just free flow. If, if you have anything, let us know. What else here? Next generation of uh, communications methods, uh, lasers. Um, this is being demonstrated by uh, Artemis II. Uh, it'll phone home using, uh, from the moon using laser beams. Uh, article written here by Joseph Long on May 14th. Um, pretty cool video here by NASA, uh, or uh, excuse me, uh, it would be uh, LCRD, uh, Laser Communications Relay uh, Demonstration. Um, Astronauts will be testing the Orion Artemis II optical communication system to transmit live 4K Ultra HD video back to Earth from the moon. The system will also support communication of images, voice, control channels, and enhanced science data. Uh, aboard, abroad Orion, uh, the space terminal includes an optical module, a, mo a modem, and a control system. Uh, the optical module features a 4-inch telescope on a dual gimbal mount. Um, the modem modulates digital information onto laser beams for transmission back to Earth and demonstrates data from laser beams received from Earth. 
the control system interfaces with avionic systems aboard Orion to control and point the communications telescope. Uh, on Earth, facilities including uh, JPL Lab and uh, White Sands Complex will maintain high bandwidth optical communications le links with Orion. Information received will be relayed on to mission operators, scientists, and researchers. Uh, again, LCRD, Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, uh, showcases the benefit of optical communications. Traditionally, missions relied upon radio communication, but improved technology will better serve space missions that generate and collect ever-increasing quantities of data. Optical communication solutions can provide one, uh, 10 to 100 times the bandwidth of radio frequency systems. Other improvements may include uh, increased link distances, higher efficiency, reduced interference, improved security, and reduction in size and weight. So they have a, uh, they've also been given a, uh, a brief history of optical communication um, a couple of years ago. Um, so you can get a real deep dive on, on that as well. So uh, pretty cool stuff here. So maybe one day we'll, we'll be using lasers to communicate over the uh, hand bands as well. To learn, to learn more, more about, about NASA, NASA laser. laser. All right, uh, what else here? Just a few people in the meet here still. A couple of people watching on YouTube, appreciate that. If you're uh, watching out there, um, if you want to uh, join in in the chat, it's over on our uh, Google Meet link. Uh, you can go to uh, w0tx.org forward slash meet. Um, we have another 25 minutes or so didn't really fully introduce this, uh, this session just because it's been just a few of us, but uh, everyone here knows this is the, uh, the Elmer session, just a general Q&A about ham radio, STEM topics. If anybody has any projects they're working on, any show and tell, uh, let us know. Still, Still working, working on, on the Mars code. code. It's, it's quite, quite a, a bit of a slog. slog. It's, it's a lot harder than, than I thought it was, was going to be. be. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, what are you? Um, are you? What tools are you using, or any websites in particular? Or? I'm just, I'm just using, using the G4FON program. program. It, it, um, it, just, it just does, does five, five minutes, minutes of mostly, mostly random, random letters. letters. So I've gotten to the point where we're a little bit words, words now. So, so that's right. Do that at least some of the time. time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what, what it looks like. like. Yeah, I was trying to find a, a download and try to use it here real quick. Uh, is it free? Probably is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, I think you, have you have to put, put in your call, call sign, sign or something to download, download it. it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, yeah, just go, go to the, the version, version call, call CW, CW trainer, trainer version 10. 10. I, think I think that's the link. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought it was there. there. It's probably somewhere around here. It is okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I very briefly tried learning Morris a while back, but uh, yeah, as you as you mentioned, it's. It's deceivingly hard. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna, gonna give, give up, up yet, though. Yeah, no, sticking with it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it starts off with two letters. Right, I'm, I'm up to five, five now. now. Just M K to start, start with, then it goes, goes to. All right, I think, think, and then S, and then, S, and then U. U, and I'm not, I'm not sure, sure what it does after that. that. Is they early starting with those letters for a reason? I wonder. I don't, I don't know. know. I think, I think it, it has, has something, something to do with the patterns, patterns and the, the, the psychology of it or something. I'm not, I'm not sure, sure exactly, exactly, but they're definitely, definitely not, not the most used, used letters. letters. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So I'm hearing it. So it's just this receiving trainer. Okay. 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 Interesting. And oh, that just closed it completely. 
And I'm sure no, the, the sending the icons, icons on the left, you can't actually access any of my, my, I just, my, it just, just opened up the words, words once, once I can use it when I got, I got a five, five letters. letters. Oh, okay. Okay, very cool. Yeah, well, good luck on that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you gotta, you gotta hear it. And I, I don't know if it, if it clicks uh, over time or, um, I know they start, like, I think the Coke method or one of the methods basically is start with maybe some, some, some letters here or there and then may move into words and phrases and, uh, hear, hear bigger words and, and focus less maybe on the, on the individual letters. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff here. Hmm. Wonder. Oh, yeah, I haven't done that, that page yet. yet. Yeah, I think well, it just so set set up? up. Yeah, set up, and yeah, just set up, and then it it oh, by oh, default yeah, it went to the right, general right, one. Right. Yeah, and the Morse code set up. It looks like you can. Add more yeah, yeah. numbers or letters, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, just there's, 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 there's a, a main, main screen. screen there's a little thing, thing kind, kind of over. Yeah, yeah it's characters, characters. That's the number of letters, letters that's down, down just below the session, session time. time. Mm, oh, okay. Yeah. You, you can, can click, click the right, right or left, left on that, on that to add, add, add delete letters. letters. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I have to give it a shot. It's, 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 it's just another language, isn't it? Really. So. Yeah, I yeah, think that's, that's the idea. idea. You're, You're supposed, supposed to treat it like, like a language. language. It, that, that's, that's why you suggest, suggest to, to do it at 20, 20 words a minute. minute. Start, start off with rather than doing a slower speed, speed because, because otherwise, otherwise you just, just learn, learn like a, a, a table, table look, look up or something, and then you have to learn it again once you get faster. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Oh. Very cool. So yeah, a couple words a week, you know, a couple letters a week, and uh, knock it out in no time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few months. months. We'll, we'll see, see how it goes. goes. So I'll probably yeah. say, say something on the learning, learning that every once in a while. while. Yes, and please do so, because uh, if, um, or, and I think you mentioned you maybe wanted to check in or do something on Morris with, with on the net, and, and, and feel free to do so. Uh, I wouldn't be able to let you know what it is, but uh, if, if we want to do like a little mini CW session, I know there's probably a, a couple people that might be able to uh, to figure it out, and I'm sure I can do it, we can do it through the computer as well too, but uh, yeah, yeah, very cool stuff. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah, yeah, of that is just that, that, that um, I, think I think I'll stick with, with it longer, longer if I actually tell, tell someone, someone else about, about it rather than, than just, just, just having it be in my head. head. So that's, that's why I mentioned it on learning, learning that. that. Gotcha, gotcha. And I know that depending on the radio you have, you can you can do some CW practice through your radio in a, in a keyer as well. Um, I guess that's another question. What uh, what type of keyer are you are you thinking about using, like straight or uh, iambic? I haven't, I haven't really, really decided, decided yet. yet. This, this guy, guy suggests, suggests you don't, you don't use straight, straight key at all, all but um, I, don't I don't know. It seems like, like most of the training, training sites, sites want, want you to learn, learn that first, first so I'm not, not really sure what's best. best. Okay. I know iambic seems like it would be maybe less motion in the wrist, maybe. And uh, yeah, I know I've seen a. Uh, a diagram somewhere where it shows how people used to maybe operate straight keys and how we should use it and it it seemed like a bent wrist kind of scenario but hmm. very cool the, the one that I, I tried to use was a Google they have a keyboard uh, uh, for CW uh, Morse code uh, that you can download to your your phone and do some training through that as well. I tried to do that and it wasn't too bad, but uh, um, I can't remember. I'll have to maybe download that again, but yeah. 
Yeah, I haven't, I haven't thought, thought too much, much about, about learning, learning to send, send yet, yet, and uh, uh, probably, probably need to learn, learn a lot more on the receiving before yeah. I'm ready, ready for that. that. Yeah. I think the things they say to, they mention to, to t- try to learn to send or receive is your call sign or name uh, to be able to hear for that or, or be able to send for that, maybe one of the first things, but uh, I, I should try to learn that, I guess. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah, good to hear. Yeah, let us know on your progress, and uh, I'm sure. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, interested in that. I know the um, the dropping of the of the CW uh, requirements. It was brought a lot of joy to, to people for the uh, um, for the license process, um, the code requirement dropping of the code requirement. Uh, but uh, it's people might uh, might be missing out and, and losing. You know, if you don't speak speak a language for a while, you you'll lose out on it. So, yeah, very cool stuff. Hey, Desiree, good evening. All right, so we have another fifteen minutes or so here. Um, what else, you guys? Um, What else have we been talking about recently? There was a really cool check-in on um, just before the Sunday Night Net, um, or there was a couple of people trying to uh, to meet up. Essentially, um, there were a couple of uh, YouTubers. Let me see if I can find their call signs here. Um, did I check them in? Yeah. I had it. it was not off the top, unfortunately. Let me see where is this at here. But uh, one gentleman was out of state. He used our uh, one of our repeaters is is connected to I'm trying to think of too many things at once here. Um, our main repeater one four five four nine zero is linked on All Star, and so a gentleman from out of state. Um, went and used All-Star to connect to our main repeater. And then there was a gentleman in state, traveling in state, um, via train line. He was going to, um, coming down from the mountains, uh, going to Union Station. Uh, why is this so tough to find here? Um, but they were using uh, APRS. They were using uh, the, um, the repeater itself. Um, and I believe... If I can find it. Um, this is frustrating. What? So the Sunday was the 13th. Where are these here? Well, this is not coming up as quickly as I was hoping it to be, but uh, yeah, pretty uh, just uh, some some cop- uh, fairly popular YouTubers uh, had had joined our um, our repeater just before the Sunday night net. I was hoping I could find it, but I can. I'm struggling to find this here. Um, I think that's why I was on the wrong day. Seventeenth. No, it's gone. If I can find it, I'll find it. Um, what else? Um, another 15 minutes or so here. Um, what else? Um, recent Sunday Night Net, uh, we're talking about upcoming events, um, some updates on the change of dates for the siren tests, um, recent exams over at uh, Denver HRO. Um, what else? Um, we were talking about uh, a couple of weeks before that, uh, asking about mobile setups, people, uh, what people were using for their mobile setups. So uh, people gave a couple of uh, follow-ups on that. Um, some uh, CS800D uh, connect systems, a uh, dual-band uh, DMR radio. Um, somebody mentioned a, a two-meter handheld uh, dual-band ICOM uh, 2730. Um, 
yeah, so that's kind of uh, what we've been up to here recently. Um, yeah, I don't have much more. I'm sure I can bring something up. Um, but if anybody has any other comments, questions, let us know. Uh, we have another 10 minutes. Um, what else? Always a great blog to read, rtl-sdr.com. Uh, if you've ever wondered, so SDR is software defined radio, and RTL is real tech. It's the original software defined radio um, that was used. That's why we have the term RTL uh, SDR. Um, pretty expensive project here, uh, building a software defined radio into a tablet, but uh, at a cost of uh, $1,500 USD, it's uh, probably out of the. Uh, you could probably spend spend your money better than that uh, on, on something different, but uh, let's see. Um, custom made two way radios built into Android tablets. Um, let's see, yeah, du uh, dual band, uh, 70 centimeter, um, two meter embedded software defined radio. I'm sure you could build this for fractionally cheaper than what they're what they're offering here, but. <laughs> Try to make sure that you are muted. Um, looks like uh, Ron just joined, appreciate that. Make sure. Okay. Yeah, did, is, is, it, is that commercial, commercial software? software? Or is, or is it, it public, public domain? domain? Sorry, uh, I was just getting something. Um, I feel like I've seen this product before, or I think I've seen their like HT style device essentially, which uses 3G and 4G to connect to a bunch of DMR and stuff. I think it's all closed source. It's all probably closed source, but it's it's probably using. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm I'm sure there's very little closed source stuff within the hobby. So I'm sure whatever they're using, I mean, Android ex itself is open source. I'm sure the apps that they're using are open source. They're probably just using the the, the SDR apps that are available in in the store. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know much too much about it. It's probably uh, worth its cost, and I, I don't know the exact uh, spec specifications of it. Um, but uh, yeah, tune, record. Um, looks like it's just a kind of a, an Android tablet with um, with a software-defined radio. Um, and what they mention, or I don't know if these guys mention it. Um, you can really easily do this by buying an Android OTG cable uh, on the go, which converts any sort of USB signal into a USB that you would plug into your phone. So you could use a, a pretty cheap um, cable like this. You can buy, you know, Best Buy or Walmart for five, 10 bucks. And then you can plug in, you can then go buy as well, uh, you know, the $20 um, software defined radio and plug it into that. So that's, uh, that's another option as well. And then, yeah, there's Android apps. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is a pretty interesting uh, device here, though. Um, where'd it go? What else? Um, something we briefly talked about was uh, EME communications, Earth, Earth Moon, Earth. Um, uh, quite in the news a lot. Uh, there was a ham radio documentary uh, that came out, uh, pretty well shot, uh, that uh, I brought up a couple times. Has some pretty cool scenes in there from. Uh, uh, using um, uh, a array of, of, of technology to, to do uh, moon bounce signals. Um, let's see, an uh, article here is bouncing LoRa signals, L-O-R-A, which is a, a long range or low power, something like that. Uh, long range. Um, 
using that to um, bounce a signal off the moon. Uh, the idea is to bounce radio signals off the surface of the moon and have them received over a vast di distance, uh, typically weak signal Amateur radio modulation schemes such as JT65 are used due to their ability to be decoded even when the very weak signals that come back from the moon bounce. Uh, recently, a group of students from the College of uh, okay. uh, New Jersey are attempting to bounce signals off the moon using a LoRa modulation scheme. Uh, it's a scheme designed to be used with Internet of Things devices. However, it is also has great performance when signals are weak, so it's a good candidate for moon bounce. Uh, they're using a HackRF and software-defined Angel, um, along um, with the signal being transmitted in the amateur radio bands at uh, 1,296 megahertz. Uh, the antenna c hardware consists of a 1,296 megahertz a feed horn attached to an eight-meter dish. They hope to use. Uh, they hope that the use of lower modulation can reduce the power requirement for EME. Uh, their quote on here, uh, main goal of their project is to establish EME communications with lower modulated signals. Uh, three main goals they're trying to accomplish, uh, reflect a signal off the moon, receive it back here in New Jersey, uh, transmit a signal from New Jersey, bounce it off the moon, and then receive the signal at, on a dish located in Alaska. And their final goal is to establish two-way communications between New Jersey and Alaska. Uh, their initial approach to this project uh, is to use a SDR Angel to modulate and demodulate their signal. It's a free open source software that they can use to transmit and receive signals. Um, so the uh, modu modulation technique lower uses chip, speds, chip spread spectrum modulation that allows for low power, long range transmissions at the cost of low data rate. Uh, peripheral of choice is a HackRF1, a software defined uh, peripheral that allows them to uh, send and receive signals. Um, very quickly on the HackRF1, HackRF products are made by a company called Great Scott Gadgets, uh, run by Michael Osman, and they are based here in uh, Colorado. So uh, really, really cool uh, tie-in there. Uh, so um, real quick on their, their video here. Um, yeah, so pretty interesting stuff. Um, I know at our recent uh, DRC Saturday event, somebody was talking about uh, satellite operations, so it seems... Like we probably have a lot of interest in, in something like this or or, or otherwise, uh, but uh, communications into the into the skies. So, um, what else? Uh, we have another five minutes. Um, not too many people joined here this evening, but uh, that is not a problem. Appreciate everyone that could be here on the uh, the Elmer session. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I mean, we talked about weather, CW operations, uh, Heath kits. Uh, Heathkit Radio, uh, there was a, 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 a member that reached out to us via our Facebook who's looking to see if they can get some assistance repairing their Heathkit, uh, and we think it's the HW22A. Um, let me see if I can bring his information up here real quick. Um, Skywarn weather spotting, we had some quite uh, recent... Uh, inclement weather so there's always always an interest and in, uh, they have their um, the class is online now which is uh, which is amazing um, let's see the uh, Heathkit uh, request was by John WB zero OWD um, so we'll try to uh, reach back out to him if, 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 uh, if we can but uh, yeah I have a, a quick, quick question, question for you, Duron. Go right ahead. Um, just, just wondered, uh, uh, on, the on the next DRC, DRC Saturday, Saturday, I've got, got an old rig here. here. I'd, I'd kind of like, like to bring up, up if, if I can, can, if I can, if I can make, make it. it. I'm just, just wondering, wondering, do I need do to bring the uh, AC power, power supply, supply along with that? Anybody know? you're uh, you're more than welcome to bring it along. I mean, most, most of these events will be, uh, there'll be a lot of show and tell involved. So you're, any one of these events, you're more than happy to bring that. As far as power, you know, people will bring in uh, battery setups. So, I mean, if you have uh, ability to do that, um, that's that would be how you do that. Otherwise, we, you might have to rely on someone else's uh, power power setup. No, I can, no, bring, I can it. bring it. I, just, I, just, I, was, I was just curious. curious. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm still... <laughs> Several weeks later, I'm still having to, to get photos, or still try, my laziness, really. But um, there's some additional photos from uh, some additional people. Steve here, AE0SF, I'll get from him. But uh, if you go to our DRC uh, web, our website, uh, W0TX on under uh, events, DRC Saturday, you can kind of see some of the uh, 
the setup, some of the radios and antennas and um, kind of what people were doing here. So, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff there, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, next one on that is June 3rd, a few weeks away from now. Elmer Picnic on the Park, uh, HT Programming and Radio Tune-Up. Um, unless noted, uh, it will be at the uh, Prospect Arena uh, where we had our uh, field day. Um, so we'll just be set up in the, uh, the parking lot there. So if anybody has any questions on that, you can always reach out to the, uh, the coordinators for that. Uh, KPS, Kevin, uh, KSRE, uh, Alex, and uh, N0XRX. Well, just a couple minutes left here. Um, not much more else from my side. If anybody has anything else, um, last minute, uh, let us know. Um, very last minute kind of odd thing, but uh, if you've never heard of this film, uh, Coffee and Cigarettes, it's a really amazing, quite crazy film by Jim Jarmuth, Jim Jarmusch. Uh, but there's a part in here where um, uh, Jack White, Meg White, uh, Jack uh, is is playing around with a Tesla coil. So it's uh, some short vignettes, but it's uh, just a pretty interesting little little film if, if you ever wanted to check that out. So Coffee and Cigarettes. So uh, that's my odd plug for this week. Um, don't let this be you, I guess, right here. Uh, somebody was very close to having their home burned down. Never, ever play around. What else? Um, um, oh, here's someone else in the waiting room. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I don't know if um, Desiree, if you want to uh, test some things or if anybody else wants to take over. Well, Jerome, this, this is Jerry. Jerry. Uh, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll make a little bit of introductions here. here. <coughs> Thanks, Thanks for everybody for joining, joining in the, the, the net there. there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out, out of town, town actually. actually. So so I, I called, called Kevin. Kevin. I, don't I don't know if I'm going to be able to connect or not, but uh, obviously I did. Sometimes hotel uh, uh, 